Today I'm going to go over collimating your telescope. I'm actually starting over after watching an astronomy shed video on YouTube. It was very detailed. I'm not going to go into all of the same steps that he did because I don't have the equipment. The first thing that the astronomy shed showed was that when aligning your secondary mirror, a laser collimator lies. And it only took him a few seconds to prove it. The primary point that he was making was that we need to set up our secondary mirror properly to start with. Setting up the secondary mirror starts by taking all of the skew and tilt out of the secondary mirror. And the only way to actually do that is to back out the, the adjusting screws while tightening up the center screw and drawing the mirror back to the base so that you it starts out in a flat position in the squarest position that you can get. As always, when you, whenever you're loosening any screws up here, you want to be sure you keep a hold of the secondary mirror so it doesn't fall and cause any damage. Now, once you've got the mirror backed all the way out, what you want to do is tighten up these adjusting screws until they just touch the base of the secondary mirror. And all it is is a matter of then finger tightening these screws until they just make t contact with the base. Once you've done that, you can loosen the center screw and then tighten each screw an equal amount, as in one full revolution. Now before I start adjusting this mirror, what I want to do is I want to isolate it from the primary mirror because as you look through the sight tube and you want to look at your secondary mirror you're going to get a lot of, of interference light feedback from the primary mirror. So what I've got is a very simple contraption here. I don't have the benefit that the astronomy shed had with a 10 inch telescope and more than enough room in a spider to be able to reach his hand in and place uh, this in so I had to come up with my own way of doing this. Now all this is is a piece of cardboard with a blank sheet of clean white paper taped to it and a little cable that I can pull back once it's in the tube and straighten it up so that it will block the primary mirror. And you need to be careful when you put this in because first thing you don't want to do is you don't want to damage your secondary mirror. paper over. Keep a hand on my little wire cable. Make sure it doesn't go near the mirror. Now you can see what it looks like in there. I just give the paper a minute to 
unfold itself a little bit. Push it down the tube a little bit. And pull the cable up. Now I've still got a couple inches between the mirror and the piece of paper, so I'm not going to have to worry about that. Now when I look in the when I look down the side tube, all I see is what's being reflected back to me through the secondary mirror. I know it may be disconcerting to see this cable hanging out, but I used it because it's flexible enough and yet heavy enough that once I get the piece in there to block the, the primary mirror, once I let go of the cable here, I know it's going to stay hanging outside of the tube and I don't have to worry about it falling down inside. Now I can look in the sight tube and see how far or at least which direction the secondary mirror needs to go. And my secondary mirror needs to go towards the primary mirror. So what I will do is loosen the center screw and then turn each adjusting screw the same amount which will keep the mirror square to the base here. Now once I've got the secondary mirror centered fore and aft on the side tube, now I can adjust the tilt and skew or rotation of it. If you have an AstroMaster 114 EQ telescope with a 1000 millimeter focal length, you have what is called a Bird Jones Newtonian telescope. It's still a Newtonian, but there's an extra focal piece in here. If you don't have a Bird Jones, don't take the sight tube out. This is only if you have a Bird Jones. This is only if you have a Bird Jones telescope. And it's fairly easy to tell if you do. If you look at the bottom of the eye tube, if there's a lens there, it's a Bird Jones. If there's not a lens, it's more than likely just a regular Newtonian. To remove the eye tube, all you need to do is remove this screw and this screw. This plate will come out. Be careful because there's a bent steel spring in there that you want to catch along with the rod that, that joins these two knobs together. Phillips screwdriver. Remove the screw. I like to keep a finger on that plate so I don't it doesn't pop out on me. If 
what you can do is keep your thumbs on that plate, wiggle it out, and it'll all come out in one piece then. You don't have to worry about dropping anything. Now the sight tube will come right out. Okay, we've got our sight tube out of the telescope assembly. And now we need to take this lens out. Before you even attempt to do this, you need a tool. This is a spanner. I got it off of, off of uh, Amazon for 18 or 20 bucks. Works very well. This spanner is made for using on camera lenses. When you adjust it, you need to be very careful because it is very easy to misjudge and slip off of here and drop the, the leg of the tool onto the lens and scratch it. And that's all it takes to loosen it up. It's not much, but with the, without the right tool, it can be very difficult. This is very finely threaded. Set it off to the side. I'm doing this in my kitchen because it's the largest spot I've got with a countertop and fairly decent lighting. You can see the lens in there now. Now, when you t the tube may be sticky, so you need to have rag around to clean your hands off, maybe more. The big, most important factor that you do when you take this lens out is to remember the exact way that it came out is the exact way that it came that it goes back in. It's a correcting lens and if you don't put it back in the same way you risk your telescope not working properly. Now we have the correcting lens out. Some people call this a Barlow I've seen it listed as a correction lens. I think it's a better way to maybe refer to it would be a correcting Barlow. And the cloth that I'm sitting that on is the lens cleaning cloth that came with the telescope. While you've got the sight tube out, have you noticed when you're trying to focus or look through the, the eyepiece that it wiggles a little bit? You can take that slop out fairly easy. This was a uh, suggestion given to me on astronomy forums. All I did was I used a little rubbing alcohol to clean the tube off and put a piece of tape on there. Now when you do this don't go slapping tape all over it. Put a piece on, go back to the uh, tube assembly and see how it fits. See if it needs another piece of tape. For mine I used two pieces of tape. The eye tube fits very snugly now, not too tight but when I go to focus it doesn't wobble. When I go to look through the eyepiece it doesn't wiggle. It's uh, very much improved my viewing. Okay, now for the next step. 
which is I put the I tube back in and I'm going to reinsert the focusing wheel and gear notice I did not say that I put the correction lens back in. The correction lens is not in the optical tube right now. And no, you can't leave it out to view. What I have here is a Ryan LaserMate laser collimator. It's got a very nice laser light to bounce off your secondary mirror to your primary. If everything is lined up correctly, all that will happen is it will bounce right back to the laser collimator and you'll be able to see in the bullseye here. Whether you turn on the laser before you put it in or turn it on after you put it in, do not look in the front of the tube. Use a piece of paper first. You see the red light? That's the laser coming through. That means that my telescope is badly out of collimation. Now that I know where the laser light is coming out, I can look at it from the side. Okay, now looking at it from the side, so I'm not getting nailed by the laser, which is coming out over here. I can see where the laser is hitting the primary mirror. If we hadn't taken the correction lens out of the eye tube, that little dot would be close to an inch in uh, kind of like an oval. I'll show you after I put it back together what that looks like. Now, from the laser to the secondary mirror, we know that we've already got that square. From the secondary mirror to the primary mirror, we need to adjust the secondary mirror so that the laser dot is hitting in the center of the primary mirror. We do that by using these screws to adjust. Okay. Now I've adjusted the secondary mirror so that it hits the primary mirror directly in the center. Now, the next thing you would do if you follow the normal instructions for a laser collimator would be to move to the primary mirror and start adjusting that. But because I messed with this Every time you adjust this, you have to make sure that you didn't adjust to where it changed the alignment with the eye tube. Okay, now I'm, a, I'm happy with that adjustment. Now I need to adjust the primary mirror. As you can see, move this up because it's going to blind the camera. You can see the dot of the laser coming back to it from the primary through the secondary mirror. So what we need to do is to adjust that to where it's in the center of that little bullseye. And we do that 
by adjusting these three, three screws. You've got three lock screws, then these three knobs that you use to tilt the primary mirror so that you can bring that the laser dot into the center. So the first thing I need to do is to loosen these. And you can move this around, but you don't want it kind of sloppy. You want to tighten it down so it's not going to move around on you. As I turn these, you should be able to see that dot moving. about as tight as I can get you so you can see this, you might be able to see this moving here. What we want to do is move that right in. Now it's right in that circle. But we're not done yet. What we want to do before we move on is to make sure that any movement we made from the primary mirror, you have to remember that it will interact with the secondary mirror so we need to make sure that that laser dot is still right in the center of the mirror. I needed to make one fine, tune, fine adjustment. So now I need to double check up here. And guess what? It's out again. So we need to make a fine adjustment. And it's back in. Check up here in front again. And the dot has not moved out of the center of the mirror, so now I know that I'm good. One thing they don't talk about in the manual is that you need to ensure that you don't have any slop here where it's tightened down. What I like to do is take it and just keep double checking it, loosen it a little, turn, tighten, double check, loosen it a little, tighten, double check. I keep doing that until I go through an entire circle. That way I know that I'm not getting any slop in there. I'll also take Put the laser collimator out, put it back in, and tighten it down to make sure I'm still dead center. And again, check back here and, whoa, guess what? We're out again. So we need to double check it.
and back to the front again. What would be better, and I haven't spent the money on, is one of the tubes that twists and tightens, but it also centers the eyepiece every single time. Uh, I'm not quite yet ready to drop the money for that. Okay, now it's time to put the eye tube assembly back together. This is where I said before to be sure and put everything back together exactly the same way. Correcting lens slips right in where it came out of. Then the retaining ring goes in on top. Be sure you put it right side up with the two little slots for the spanner. Be very gentle with this. You don't have to force it. If you try and force it, you will probably strip the threads. Then with our spanner, we need to do is set it down in the slots, give it a little bit of tension, and it's ready to go back into the optical tube assembly. The eye tube will only go in one way. Got that little slot there. Just slides in. Replace the screws. They just have to be snug. They don't have to be over tight. Now the eye tube assembly is back together. <clears throat> Said I'd show you what that That's the size of the laser dot when it goes through that correction lens. It's neither a dot nor is it small. When you're looking at it at the bullseye, it'll also throw you off. I never could get my scope collimated correctly until I found out to take out that correcting lens.